All right, it is Boom O'Clock on MMAFighting.com, and I'm being joined by Brian Kelleher, who's back in the UFC Octagon on Wednesday night. He's going to take on Hunter Azure in the quarantine weight class of 145 pounds. Brian, how are you, man? Boom, baby. I'm doing good. How's everything? Everything's good. It's been crazy, as it is for you, I'm sure. Outside of uh, creating a ton of video content and calling out potential opponents in song, how has the quarantine life been treating you to this point? It's been all right, man. At first it was tricky, you know, uh, I was trying to, you know, do the right things and stay, you know, away from everyone and this and that. But then I'm like, I got to fight. So I kind of just twisted my focus into let's go. This is fight time. Like do what you have to do to feel prepared and feel ready for a fight. And, you know, I was in somewhat a shape, but I had to pick up the training. So now I've been in the gym, select few partners and like, you know, really cramming a, a camp in for like two weeks of just going nuts for like the last uh, couple of weeks. And that that's about it, man. With this whole situation with COVID-19 and people taking fights on short notice, it, it's clearly something a lot of fighters are down to do, but it's still outside of their comfort zone in a way. And they, they find a way to make it work. That's just who they are. They're fighters. But from the outside looking in, it seems like a situation like this to fight, although it's not ideal, I feel like you embrace this chaos far better than most people do. Like this is something that's in your wheelhouse. Am I crazy for thinking that? No, not at all. I, I, I feel like for some reason there's like a chip on my shoulder for being able to fight right now. It's almost like – I know that the world is is shut down and quiet, but I'm able to do what I love still, and I'm able to perform and put on entertainment for those people that are kind of stuck home and feeling down or whatnot. You know, I'm able to go in there and live my life and still make money when a lot of people aren't. So for me, I'm like really excited, you know, to to do that with all these circumstances. Did I see this right? Did did you have a run in with a deer recently? Oh my God, man. My Subaru, I have a WRX. I nailed a deer uh, out east going to my girlfriend's and uh, I couldn't even stop. It just came out of nowhere. Boom. This thing flies like 20 feet in the air onto the side of the road and my car's just smashed. Like the damage was insane. It was like $10,000 worth of damages and my car wasn't totaled and uh, now I got it back. It's fixed. So I've been driving that thing. It's been feeling nice to drive again. That is scary, man. Like those things give zero Fs at all. Like they just jump right out in the middle of the highway. They don't even think twice about it. No, it literally just made a split decision to to go. And I wasn't even going that fast. I was going like maybe 45 and just I had no time. It literally met my car perfectly, like where I was on the road. And uh, it's just the loudest smash. And like, thankfully, you know, I was able to, you know, stay on the road and nothing happened. But uh, the deer is uh, I should have kept the deer. I should have kept the head and like mounted it up on the front of my car or something. <laughs> Oh, uh, what a what a scary situation! But you, you're okay. Nothing nothing happened to you, right? No, everything was good with me. Yeah. So coming out of your last fight with Ode Osborne, you entered free agency, and that was a, a big talking point. Ultimately, you accepted this fight with Hunter Azure, and with that, you got yourself a fresh new four fight contract with the UFC. Obviously, congratulations on that. But I assume you are quite happy with how this all played out. Oh yeah, hundred percent, man. I, you know, of course, coming off that big win for me, big believer in momentum. Like I want to keep the ball rolling, so that's another reason why I'm excited to be able to perform it and uh, get another victory. You know, I had a vision for this year. Let's get three or four big wins in a row, go on a win streak, and and put myself back into relevancy. You know, top fifteen, top ten talks. So, uh, you know, I'm glad me and Hunter kind of came together, made this fight happen. I know he was supposed to fight someone else. It fell through. He agreed to 145. So that made it easier for me to be able to take the fight and uh so we got the deal done and here i am the contender series killer baby <laughs> i i know things change very quickly in the world with with covid19 and everything going on but were there any other nibbles at all like any other offers from promotions outside of the ufc who are possibly looking to acquire your services no, and you know what? That's that's something I thought about. Uh, this all kind of happened so quick. So for me, I was like, well, I knew I wanted to stay with the UFC. I knew that's you know my goal is to be the best fighter in the world, like all of us. And you know the UFC is where it's at. And you know other than that, you're like, okay, well if if a lot more money is offered, I will take that for my future. But uh, it kind of seemed like my manager knew we were sticking with the UFC. We were just waiting for that opportunity to to get a deal done. And I'm not quite sure we really even tested the market correctly, which 
upsets me a little bit because I feel like the only way to find out your worth is to do that and to see if the UFC will match it and and what you want to do. But uh, ultimately, I'm happy to stay with the UFC. I feel like I probably wouldn't have got much more of a deal than what I got with them. So everything's all good. Yeah, it all worked out the way you pretty much expected it to. So yeah, it is what it is. Um, but congratulations once again. And now you're going to fight Hunter Azure on Wednesday night in good old Jacksonville, Florida. And I actually sp- spoke to Hunter a little earlier. He feels like compared to other fight buildups in his career, and I'm sure you're feeling this as well, this one is quite different. He's obviously been training and getting ready for a fight with Umar Namagamadoff, but now he's got a short notice fight in the quarantine weight division with you. And he sort of stated that this is more of a, hey, you want to fight? Hey, I want to fight. Let's fight and we'll have some fun in there type of approach to this thing. Is that how you're viewing this as well? Yeah, for sure, man. And I think for me, um, having fun is like a huge uh, factor in in my mindset. You know, I feel like when I have fun in sparring, when I'm enjoying the process, I'm doing my best. So for me, I keep that mindset going into these fights. You know, this is this is fun for me. I'm excited to perform. And, you know, it's going to be different with the no crowd and everything like that. But I'm just looking at it as go in there, have fun and and let everything out. And you're going to you know, the best Brian Kelleher will, will prevail. I know, and you sort of alluded to this uh, a little earlier, that you guys were messaging back and forth prior to the fight being booked. You guys were were cool with 145, and now you guys are going to meet in a little under a week's time. I know you're a guy who who watches a lot of fights, so I assume you watch Hunter's debut fight against Brad Katona. I'm sure you watch Contender Series fight. What have you made of his introduction to the promotion so far? Yeah, uh, I'll be quite honest. I I watched the Katona fight. I actually thought that Katona maybe won that fight. It was very close, but I saw you know Katona kind of pushing uh, forward mostly. He he was getting takedowns. He was kind of uh, more so the aggressor. Even though watching that fight. I don't really think Katona brought him enough fear that I could bring, you know, enough diversity, enough power, enough commitment to the striking where he instilled fear in this guy. I feel like this guy kind of fought a very comfortable fight with Katona and he's a good wrestler. He's very good at getting up back to his feet. Uh, But, you know, Katona had success taking him down a bunch of times. So I took a lot away from that fight and also the contender series fight. But uh, for the most part, I let my coaches do like the, the nitty gritty studying and I kind of focus on what I'm good at and i want to just bring the best me into the cage that's my focus he was quite complimentary of your win over oday osborne but he said he presents a whole bunch of different problems than oday brought to that fight and he feels outside of your boomatine choke (laughs) he's better than you everywhere else and and doesn't think that this fight even gets out of the second round and i know some people are going to hear me say this and be like ah there he goes stirring the pot he's talking crap but i literally just spoke with the man and this is exactly what he said how do you respond to that yeah no i mean that's part of the game you know he's got to be confident in him in himself you know and think he's better everywhere just like i feel the same way for about myself you know i feel like he you know looking at his fight against the contender series guy and katona and the successes that they had in the fight even though he won i feel i bring a whole different level of diversity in my game striking wise scrambling wise uh i'm not just gonna lay there and let the guy take my back and and hold me down you know i'm a different kind of fighter so uh i feel like my finishing abilities will will come to show in this fight whether it's striking or on the ground you know uh uh, I don't think he really has a good grip on who I am as a fighter. You know, that O'Day fight was really quick, really fast. You didn't get to see my whole game. There are other fights on me out there, but uh, I'm really confident in myself everywhere in this fight. It's Thursday as we're recording this right now. When do you head out to Jacksonville? Are you going to be there when 249 happens? Like, I know you're not going to be in the arena, but will you be there as that event's going down? No, they actually have us flying out on Sunday. So I'll be there Sunday afternoon, and I will be uh, not looking forward to that long-ass swab going uh, in my nose. I'm quite terrified of that. Probably more scared of that than the fight itself, which is kind of hilarious. But uh, yeah, I hope that shit's quick and smooth. I'm kind of like bummed that all these videos are being posted because I'm watching and I'm just cringing after all. I'm like, we're, we're, the Carla Sparza one, I think, was the worst one. She made the some of the worst faces. Tony Ferguson was like, yeah, dude, like this is this is what I do. And John Morgan getting them. It's just it's just scary, man. Have you had it done yet or is this going to be the first time? No, this is going to be the first time. And it's just like I, I kind of like imagined what people said it felt like, just like a burning sensation, tickly, kind of weird. And, you know, it, it'll be fine. I'm just going to close my eyes and just be like, whatever, do your thing. You know, we got we got to do it. So it is what it is. 
First fight of the New Deal, crazy times in the world, less of a weight cut, chaos is going to ensue in Jacksonville. How do you see this all playing out against the undefeated prospect in Hunter Azure? Yeah, man, I'm really excited, you know, for, for multiple reasons. One of them being that, you know, I fought at 145 way back, but now I just, I feel strong. I feel this different kind of power in my punching. Uh, I just feel like uh, it, it's going to translate over to the fight. You know, I don't know. You don't know until you do it. I usually make 135. I drain myself, you know, it's a harder cut and then I recover. But how much do I recover? I don't really know. I'm going to find out now what the difference is when I make 145 very healthy. I'm only 10 pounds over as we speak. And and um, that's never the case for 135. I usually show up to fight week like 14 pounds over. So I feel like I'm going to go in there and display a lot more power in, in my striking and uh, a lot more aggression as well. So I'm looking forward to it. You sort of alluded to this, but with this wild time, it seems like there could be a lot of opportunities to stay active in 2020 despite everything going on in the world. Like I know we're not looking past Wednesday night, but – you know, do you all goes well on Wednesday night? Do you just want to jump back right like right back in there? Like, let's just load them up and maybe, who knows? Maybe you fight out your entire deal in 2020 with everything going on. 100 percent, man. And that's part of this whole situation as well. Uh, there's a blessing in the fact that, you know, I'm gradually coming down to 145. Now, after this fight, I'm not going to blow up you know, to where I was because my training's going to start picking up again and keeping where it's at. So I'll probably, you know, get back to 156, 157. I'll be able to fight at Bantamweight, my natural weight class next. And that could be, you know, a couple of months later and I can potentially still get four fights in this year, which is really exciting for me because, you know, I'm 33. I, I don't, you know, time doesn't wait for anybody. I want to get in there and I want to keep fighting as much as I can while I'm in the UFC. Have you had any response at all? from Sean O'Malley. Like whether he appreciated the song you wrote him or not, the song Sugar, which you guys probably saw on social media at this point, is is, is pretty fantastic, I'm not gonna lie. Any, any response at all to that? No, not really. I think I've heard him mention a couple of times like fighting me would mean nothing to him, beating me, you know, would mean nothing for his career and this and that. But I, I, I disagree, you know, I think people wanna see him tested and I think people respect me for what I've been through in the fight game, who I fought, you know, Burrell, Lineker, Chito Vera, win or lose, you know, I go in and fight tough guys, whoever they put in front of me. So uh, I think after this fight, though, when I beat Hunter and I get on the mic and, uh, you know, the whole contender series killer type theme, I think that's going to uh, escalate things and potentially uh, get me closer to that matchup. That's smart, man. Smart business right there. H has a fight ever been brought your way with Sean? Like, has it even been offered at this point? No, and and, and I don't think it would uh, be offered because I think the UFC is very strategic and smart with uh, superstar type guys that they have a lot of faith in, you know, to, to bring up in the company. Uh, so I think that they're going to be smart with who they pick him to fight you know someone with a name with relevancy but but beatable for his style i think that's how they look at it so for me you know i think if i if i make more noise and i go on a big win streak it gives me a lot more power to, to perhaps get that fight before we we let you go of course we gotta talk about fights that are going on but um, I know you have your boom breakdowns on YouTube. You went through and made your picks for UFC 249, so I highly recommend you go and check that out. But I just have a, a couple of questions for you based on the fight card itself, one of which takes place in your division at 135, not for Wednesday, but you know consistently at 135. Dominic Cruz getting a title shot against Henry Cejudo after three-plus years away, and you see the arguments out there, like Piotr Jan deserves the shot, and Sterling, and Sanhagen, and all three of those guys have arguments for it, but I've been pretty steadfast in saying I think the UFC made the right call here because Jan's been on fire, but I don't think he's had that like marquee win yet. Like Faber's a good win. It's a good name in the resume, but he hasn't had like a top three win yet. If he beats Marias, no doubt about it, he deserves a title shot. Sterling's been hurt. He's recovering. Maybe June is what I'm hearing for a return for him. And then Sandhagen, maybe the only other guy that makes sense. But if you're looking at it from a business perspective and you're looking at fight posters, Cruz versus Cejudo sells more than Sandhagen versus Cejudo. It's just the way that it is. How do you view what's going on at the top of your division right now in this fight in particular? Yeah, I'm I'm super excited for this fight, and I and I agree. I think you know I think they they reached out to Aljo and Jan, and I think they kind of had figured out that you know Jan can't get to the states, and and Aljo was dealing with an injury, so he was kind of on hold, and so they were like, well, hey, like if Cruz is 
if timing works out and Cruz is coming back and, and Cejudo wants to fight him, this is probably the biggest name they could select to do this. So, you know, this company is a business. They're trying to put on the biggest fights. And, and this is right now, I think, you know, the biggest thing they could do at Bantamweight. And, uh, you know, there's a storyline there. Cruz has been out for so long and he's that guy that like talks about ring rust. It's not a real thing. And, you know, a lot of people want to see what can Cruz do when he comes back? Imagine he could pull this off after all that time off again, like he did again against Mizugaki it's like that's a huge uh interest as far as uh you know my my view goes and um I think that the fight's amazing I think it's a great matchup I think you know Cruz presents a lot of problems to Cejudo with his movement his angles his length his size uh his scrambling abilities as a, as a, a wrestler MMA fighter it's different um so I can't wait to see this fight uh I I do hope the division kind of plays itself out I know Aljo's probably gonna fight Sanhagen and Jan's gonna have to fight Mariah's and you know the winners are gonna come out and probably fight each other and we're gonna find out who's the best so I'm excited yeah, 135 is just so good right now. Um, I, I think in terms of the card, it's so good. You know, Amazing. I think everyone expects Ferguson Gaethje to be what it is. Like, I think we're all just excited for it. We don't really need to, you know, be – we don't need to enthuse ourselves anymore for that fight. It's just what it is. But from a storyline perspective, Cruz versus Ahudo, like, that checks all the boxes for me. But me being a, a storyline guy, I love the under-the-radar storylines. Of course, everyone's talking about the two title fights that we talked about. And some of the big bouts with a lot on the line, like Rosenstrike versus Ngano, that's a big one. Cater and Stevens is, is one that a lot of people are talking about. But what's sort of that under-the-radar fight that's not getting enough love that you have circled on the fight card for Saturday night? Oh, Brian Kelleher versus no, I'm kidding. Well, that's that's the 13th. But for for a Saturday night, uh, I'm saying um, Luke versus um, what's his name? Is it? I'm slipping up. Nico Price. Yeah, there we go. Price. Uh, that's a. I mean, that's a rematch fight, right? But uh, those are two guys that are are doing big things. You know, Luke is very uh, technical, and then Price is like a wild man, and he's kind of like Ferguson at, at the 170 pound class. Uh, I'm interested to see how that fight plays out for sure. That's a good one. I, I also like uh, Bryce Mitchell versus Charles Rosa. So That's nasty. Like the second fight of the night. That's This card is so good. Get the guy's camo shorts, right? <laughs> just see him jump on Dana's Instagram live and he just keeps prodding him with that. I love it. Yeah, it's so funny, man. I always find that hilarious. Like when guys do that, they just keep pressuring. But Dana's like, he's starting to bite a little bit, you know? He was just like, come on, man. But then at the end, he was like, We'll get you your shorts eventually. Just, just leave me alone. I just think it's it's one of those things where he's just gonna get poked too much. You're like, get this guy his camo shorts for God's sake, so I don't have to hear about it anymore. <laughs> yeah, then everybody's gonna be like, I want these kind of shorts. I want this. <laughs> that's why, you know. <laughs> that's the thing. You take it in. You want a mile, and that's just that's just how it works. But uh, always a pleasure, man. Great catching up with you during this wild time. Safe travels. Congratulations on the new deal, and all the best to you on Wednesday night, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Heck all of right, an brother. interview. <laughs> Yes, you're always good with those puns, and it's much appreciated. <laughs> it's all, right. all over. You have to, you know? <laughs> Absolutely.